Hey everyone, welcome back. Today we're going to be making a first person controller. You know, haven't been making videos in two months. I don't know, I, I, <laughs> I lose motivation to do so. But, you know, the channel's been growing, I should probably do it. Anyway, let's get right into it. Alright, so you want to make a player. First of all, you probably need a ground, like a scene. Uh, so we're just going to make a quick one. By the way, um, one thing that you will have to do for the ground checks is uh, when you make a ground object in the layers, add a layer, and we're just going to call this one uh, ground, and we're just going to assign uh, the object the layer of ground. Another thing, I'm in the long-term uh, version support. Uh, this, this, It should be the exact same if you're using a newer version, but uh, just keep that in mind. Right, I'm also going to set up a materials folder. I've also got a scripts folder, just put my scripts in. And we're going to create a ground material. And we're also going to create two more materials for random boxes. Box one. And... Oh, I'm going to give the box like a red. No shininess. Green. No shininess. And the ground's going to be like a grey. With no shininess. Cool. Let's just assign these. Let's add two boxes. Man, this feels weird not being in uh, HDRP. I've been in there for quite a long time. I'm also just going to scale up this plane and scale up a few boxes. Cool. So now I've got like a little scene to play around with, right? Uh, another thing is that we're going to have to put... Instead of the mesh collider on this, because if, uh, if we look at the mesh collider, we click convex, uh, we can see that it's it's... It's quite boxy. Also, uh, with the physics check, sometimes things can fall through the ground. So I'm just going to give it a simple box collider. And I'm just going to scale it uh, up so that it's, you know, it's a little bit lower down. Um, let me just make this a little bit bigger. I'm also just going to chuck everything in a scene, uh, scene object. Just so it's a little bit more clean. Cool. Okay. Uh, so the... So straight away, what we're going to do is we're going to set up the mouse look, right? So we're going to create a new empty, and we're going to call this player. Now, under player, we're going to create a 3D object. Uh, I'll explain everything in a second. We're going to make a capsule, and it's going to be called player, the player body. This could really be called whatever you want, but uh, this would be, you know, the uh, if you have your own character imported from, let's say, uh, you know, Mixamo or any of that, in, anything like that, you would... Um, call this you would you would have this as that instead and then you animate it um and then again we're gonna not again uh, we're gonna drag our main camera onto our player uh i'm just gonna call this player cam now it is uh and reset the transforms and let's move it up so it's uh kind of where the eyes would be i usually think 0 0.6 0 0.65 is a little bit better uh and i also find that if we scale this to 0 0.7 uh the body looks a little bit more realistic Another thing we're going to do is remove the capsule collider from the player body because we'll be using the character controller to move our character around and that has its own collider built into it. Uh, and you will have to change the radius of the collider to match what you uh, set the collider to. And one last thing that we'll need is we're going to be making an empty on a player body and this is going to be called the ground check. This is going to be checking whether or not the player's on the ground and we're going to position it right at the bottom, just slightly above. And this is going to be called, this is going to be about 0 0.95 below 0. Cool, so now we've got like a pretty basic player. You can give him a material material if you want. I'm just giving him like a red one. Uh, or just give him a new one, like blue. Cool, nice blue color. Cool, so we've got ourselves a character with color. Uh, and pretty much, we're, we want to move this character, right? So, if we go onto our character, you might think, oh, well, I'm going to put the, uh, you know, the, the camera script on this, and the player body script on this, but that's actually a no, because we want to move everything uh, from the base object, right? So, if we move this, we can move them around, but if we move our player body, uh, the camera's still there, so we want to kind of keep it the same, uh, keep the origin point zero, we want, the, we want the base character to be moving. Another thing is, if you're getting the component from somewhere else, you do want to be able to uh, find all your components easily. Uh, in saying that, we'll just give this the player tag in case you want to reference it from another script. 
Then, now we're going to be making the scripts. So we're going to add two scripts here. We're going to be called Player Movement um, and Mouse Look. Let me load it. Mouse Look. Cool. So you've got two, and I'm just going to drag these into our scripts folder, because you've got to keep it clean. Cool. So once those are loaded, we're going to open up the Mouse Look script, as this will be the first script we'll change. Cool, so straight away what you want to do is you're going to remove uh, the start and update method. We can add those later. Also, they get, you know, fresh start. It's nice. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to create a public uh, transform. And this is going to be a reference to the camera. I'm just going to call it camera. Cam. Uh, if you do camera, that, that's an actual uh, predetermined object. So you probably don't want to do camera, I think. For, we'll, we'll do camera for now. It's shorter uh public we're also gonna make it a public transform and this is gonna be the player body now you might think the player body is going to be the other object um instead we can actually probably call this player root um you know probably a bit more uh suited player root is actually the we're gonna be moving rotating the actual character itself uh the body is actually for the animation Cool, and then we're also going to make a public float, and this is going to be called Sensitivity. Got it. Cool. <laughs> Alright, so straight away we're going to go in the update method, uh, and we're going to make a start method. In the start method, we're going to go cursor dot... I always get this wrong. Lock state is equal to cursor lock mode dot... I think it's locked. <laughs> I think. I'm not sure if that's a capital C or not. We'll see, we'll see, we'll see. Um... But th what this will do is it's going to lock our mouse, so then, uh, as you might notice in every FPS game, uh, your mouse isn't free moving around the screen when you're moving it around. Uh, can get annoying. Uh, but in the update method, we're going to make a float, and we're going to call this X, and we're going to set it equal uh, to it, to input.getAxis, and then we're going to get the mouse X axis. And now we're going to multiply this by sensitivity. Um, and we're going to do the same for our y axis. So uh, if you guess what we're going to do, we're going to go input dot get axis and mouse y. I'm going to multiply this by sensitivity. Cool. Now, uh, this is when it gets a little bit complicated and a little bit confusing. Um, so we're going to make two uh, just basic floats, no public or private here, and rot x uh, and float rot y. Now you might think is that uh, what we're going to match up x to x, y to y. That's not what's going to happen here. So we're going to go rot x minus equals to y. Uh, and then, sorry, not capital Y, y. I'll explain everything in a second. Because uh, it does take some getting used to. And uh, minus equals to y, but this will be plus equals equal to x. Uh, otherwise, it will invert. Um, yeah, it's just the way it happens. Next, we're going to rotate our camera and player root. Uh, so we could go play root dot. Crap, sorry. Uh, first of all, we'll rotate out of camera. So we're going to go cam dot rotation because it's a transform. So we can get the rotation rotation uh, rotation. There we go. Uh, is equal to quaternium dot Euler. And now we can input a vector three or a th uh, quaternion, but it's a you know it takes three inputs. Uh, so we can uh, input our rot x, our rot y, and then for the z we're gonna have zero because these technically the tilt. Uh, you probably only have tilt if you were you know maybe leaning around a corner uh, or something like that. We can add that in later if you want, but uh, you know. Now um, we actually probably don't need rot y here because. Uh, and we're actually going to be, we don't need rot y in the camera rotation. Instead, we're going to be putting that in the player root. Uh, because the camera is already on the player root. It doesn't need to rotate again. But instead of rot, instead of rot x, it will be zero. So, uh, camera dot rotation is rotating, uh, with, in the x axis. And player rotation, sorry, player root rotation is, uh, rotating on the y axis. Uh, and this actually is pretty much done. So let's uh, close this and go back into Unity. Cursor. Ah, 
Okay, it's capital. Uh, in the start method, cursor.lock state is capital C. There we go. Alright, so on our player now, we have camera, player root, and sensitivity. Um, so with the camera, the reason why we're rotating X to Y is if you can think, if you move your mouse up and down, you want it to be rotating uh, this way, right? And that is actually the X axis. Uh, y, uh, if you rotated it, it would be going this way. Because uh, that's the Y axis. Uh, a little bit confusing, uh, but you, you do get used to it. Okay, so... In the player, we're gonna assign our values. So the player root is the player, and the player cam is the, is the player, and we're gonna set the sensitivity to one, and let's see what happens. So our X axis is locked. Gotta remember how to do this. Oh yeah, right. Okay, so you do actually need rot X in here, otherwise you need to do some weird thing with the rotation. Um, sorry, wait, not rot X in there. So I'm very tired. Uh, rot, rot Y in the camera dot rotation. There we go. I forget every once in a while, that's okay. Cool, so now when we play, we've got, you know, uh, you know, a, cl a pretty clear move look around. Now, one more thing, uh, it's just a weird thing with the coding uh, if you put the player rotation above uh it minimizes a sort of lagging effect haven't really been able to figure out how to do it but at low fps it really gets annoying but i think this yeah it's fixed, it's fixed now <laughs> just put the uh player root rotation first and then the camera rotation cool now we're actually on to player movement uh, yeah, this is... How long is this? Dang, 13 minutes. Quickest tutorial ever for me. Dang, okay. Uh, we're gonna make a reference to our public transform, and this is gonna be the player... Uh, the player route, again. Uh, otherwise you can just call transform as well. Uh, saves coding a little bit. Uh, make a public float called speed. A public bool called, uh, grounded. Uh, a public... Sorry, just a vector 3 for this. Vector 3... Uh, velocity, a public float, gravity, and a public layer mask, uh, what is ground, and a public uh, transform called ground check, lowercase g, Joe. Uh, and a public float called <laughs> ground check distance and a is that it? I think we did it. I think we got it all. <laughs> uh, pretty complicated. That that yeah, that's that's it. That's how much um That's how many variables. Cool. Totally not. Um annoying uh we can actually separate these out so we've got these uh is grounded we can make velocity and gravity kind of separate things there we go that kind of that kind of helps with the confusion so at the start of our update we're also going to be doing the float x but this time it's not equal to the mouse because we're not getting the mouse input uh we'll be doing get axis though and this time in uh in quotation marks where we do it horizontal Horizontal is a axis that is uh, derived from A to, a to D, uh, S to W, and uh, arrow keys alike. So keep that in mind. Float Y uh, is equal to input, you guessed it, dot get axis vertical. So we're going to be making a public character controller. Um, and we're just be calling this controller. Then down here, we're going to be uh, making a new vector 3. So we're going to be going vector 3, and that's going to be called move. And we're going to set it equal to uh, transform. No, we're going to be going player root dot forward. So we're going to be uh, getting the forward vector of the player, player root, and we're going to be multiplying it by y. Uh, and then we're going to be adding the player root dot right, so the right, right vector of the player root, multiplied by x. So we're going to be pretty much, this is how we move, essentially. 
Uh, and we could go, we could call controller because that's a reference to our character controller, which handles all the movement. And we're going to be calling the move function. And this takes a vector three, so we're going to be putting in our move, and we're going to be multiplying this by time dot delta time to make it uh, frame rate de not dependent. So essentially, it's uh, doing it in real time instead of uh, however many frames per second you're getting. Cool, let's quickly check if this is going to work. So let's go back to our game. Uh, it's going to load all the shit. And here we go. <laughs> player, uh, we're going to drag in the character controller here. Player root, uh, drag in the player. Uh, speed, we'll give it a 2. Gravity, negative 9.81. We can always change this later. I find that 9.81 sometimes doesn't do that well. Uh, in the layer mask, we're going to be selecting ground. Ground check, we're going to be dragging a ground check. And ground check distance, I like 0.17. Doesn't matter yet, but who cares. Cool, now let's click play and see what happens. Cool, so we can actually move around. And um, <laughs> we are very slow. But uh, that's okay, we could increase this to maybe like an 8. Uh... Oh! We're stuck at one because I have to multiply by speed. In our update, uh, when we're setting the floats, I've actually forgot to multiply by speed on each of these. So let's go back and we should be good now. Now if we click play. There we go. Move a little bit faster. And as you can see, we are colliding. Um, to fix this clipping issue with the camera, uh, you go into the camera and you set the clipping planes near to zero. Or uh, at least however low it can be. It's just going to prevent the clipping. Um, don't ask me why it's set to anything like this. I guess it can be used for some things, but it's it is very annoying. And it, I always set it to zero. I never come somewhere that I need it <laughs> any lower. Set that to zero out of play mode. Let's just set the FOV to 70 as well. It looks a bit nicer. Anyway. Ah, uh, you don't need to do that, by the way. <laughs> cool. So now, what we're going to do is we're going to set up gravity. Gra g gravity, oh, it's easy peasy. Not really. A little bit of, you know, beginners don't really get it as much. Cool. So we're going to be... Making a raycast... Hit, and we're going to be calling this hit or ground hit. Uh, ground hit's probably a bit more appropriate. Uh, and then on the next line, we're going to be going physics dot raycast. Now, what is a raycast? Big and scary. Essentially, if you have an object, right, and you want to shoot a ray out of it, a ray, um, not an array, a ray, a uh, like a beam sort of. That beam can touch whatever whatever you want in a, within a distance, within infinity, whatever. But you can get data from that object and use it, uh, essentially. So let's say if you, especially with guns, right? Guns are a great example. If you use a gun, uh, shoot a ray cast out of it as the bullet. Uh, if it hits its target, then you've dealt damage. Uh, that's the main main re that's the main way to, wait main way to use it. In the raycast uh, function, uh, we're going to be instead of physics dot raycast, we're actually going to be going grounded is equal to physics dot raycast because believe it or not, raycast can output a boolean, a bool, and we set the bool up here as grounded. Uh, we're going to set it equal to physics dot raycast, right? So uh, we need a position that it's going to go from. So let's give it trans not transform to position we're going to be going uh ground check dot position because this is this is what's going to be checking for the ground so it's going to be closer to the ground next we're going to be giving it a direction so we're going to be going ground check dot transform direction uh remember to keep the capitals uh capital t capital d uh input a vector three in here we're going to be go vector three dot down out hit and we're going to be going by uh, out, it means it's going to be uh, pretty much giving out the information to a hit, a ground hit. Uh, we're going to be going for um, ground check distance, amount of amount of uh, distance, and we're going to be only hitting the what is ground layers. Cool. <laughs> Bit of a mouthful. Let's go back to Unity and make sure I did that right. 
I did not. Uh, Raycast hit. Oh, crap. Uh, in Raycast hit, it's a lowercase c. It's one word. For both of them. <laughs> Haven't used Raycast in a while. You might, you might, you might realize. Out, uh, ground chips. There we go. On that, I believe we did everything correct. Hey, I haven't used Raycast in like two months and I figured it out. Cool. Anyway, um, just change the ground hit to, uh, the hit to ground hit in the physics of Raycast. So that should be getting, uh, whether or not grounded or not. Now we need to, uh, do all the gravity stuff. So, essentially, uh, usually what, so what we'd do basically is go velocity, uh, you know, minus is equal to gravity, multiplied by time, dot, uh, delta time. Uh, and we're going to be moving... Hopefully the F up the caps on that one. <laughs> cool. So that that's that will be you know making us uh, plus equals to gravity by the way because you can go positive vectors. Um, let's give it an F statement. That, that that's all well and good, but we're going to be infinitely increasing our velocity, right? We need to we need to slowly slowly increase our velocity on but only when we're in the air. Uh, so we can go if, uh, grounded is equal equal to true, then, uh, instead of this, we can copy that, else that, but, uh, we can set velocity, uh, instead of velocity, we're actually going to be going velocity at y, because we're going to be getting the positive velocity, sorry, the up velocity, is equal, instead of plus for the, for the top one, uh, if it's true, then we're going to set it to a, you know, negative two. Uh, it kind of moves you down, pushes you down onto the ground. Um, you can set this to a higher value if you want, like three or something. Uh, it's mostly just to keep the player on, intact on the ground. Uh, else, we're just going to be increasing the gravity by time or delta time. Cool. So now what we're going to do is controller dot move. And we're going to be inputting the velocity vector. Cool. So now let's see what happens here. Boom. Oh, wait. wait, wait, wait. <laughs> uh, in controller.move velocity, we're going to be multiplying this by time. Dot delta time. Cool. So now if we do this, just make sure we've got all this. Cool. Let's click play. And as you can see, we are grounded. If this doesn't show up for you, um, one thing that I would tell you to do is make sure your ground has the ground layer on it, uh, as well as your cubes. Maybe you're standing on top of a cube. Um, and make sure that the, you know, the ground check is low enough. Um, and yeah, I don't know why our character is slightly above. Is that our height? Uh, I don't know. Uh, but as you can see, if we increase our gravity... Oh, right. We're grounded. Funny. <laughs> we're grounded, so it doesn't matter. Um... How do I try... How do I test this? Uh, if you lift yourself up, as you can see, you're falling. Uh, if you lift yourself up a long way, as you can see, you're falling... By increasing speed, if that doesn't say realistic, I usually go negative 18. Uh, seems a bit more... <laughs> negative 19 about, you know, it seems a bit more... A bit more realistic. I don't know why. Go negative 19. Anyway, now we're going to be setting up jumping. The, In my opinion, the most annoying. We're going to be making a few more values. So we're going to be a public float. Uh, it's going to be called jump heights and a that's it actually we're going to only need jump height cool okay so we're going to be doing jump height right so um before we apply then by the way i uh actually have to say thanks to brackies for uh teaching me how to do jumping never knew how to do it and then on their first person controller one but i like my way better it's kind of this is i feel like this is almost quite similar to theirs actually now that i think about it 
Um, <laughs> now if I can remember the script. Anyway, back on track. Uh, go check out Brackies. They're a really good channel. Anyway, um, before we apply our velocity, so that's you know, right here, uh, we can we can call uh, if input dot uh, gets uh, key down. Uh, key code dot uh, left shift. Wait, no space. I don't know why I was doing left shift. That's sprint. Cool. Key code dot space. Uh, we can jump essentially. Uh, so we can go velocity dot y is equal uh, to math f dot square root. Yeah, square roots. Um, we could be taking in the jump height, multiply by negative two multiplied by our gravity it's an actual formula i know <laughs> some genius worked out the formula for jumping you know if you guys want to you know think about your jump height or very velocity just see how high you can jump and then do this <laughs> easy cool let's go back to unity sweet uh if we go here and like set our jump height to 10 make it really obvious we now jump and we now jump all right guys um i actually realized i need to put this under under our if statement here that checks whether or not grounded otherwise uh it's just going to instantly set our velocity to negative two before we can even get our velocity up uh so and also add uh ch change the equals to a plus equals um in there cool so now if we give ourselves a jump height of 10 and we click play Hopefully this should work. If we go here and we click jump, and there we go, we can jump now. <laughs> How cool is that? Um, you can, you can kind of test. But as you can see, um, <laughs> we can keep jumping. That is a problem, right? Uh, oh, how are we gonna how are we gonna fix this? We could just keep jumping. It's gonna be impossible. Not really. Not not really, folks. We're gonna actually uh just and 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 uh grounded is equal to true it's gonna check whether or not we're grounded instead or you could just make it that if you're touching something so then you can climb walls uh that's pretty cool so see yep and if we do this we can jump now also i would like to turn off our speed uh <laughs> yeah a bit better and as you can see we're finished we got ourselves a little thing now I can't hit those boxes, so uh, I need to put them into the ground layer. Cool. Anyway guys, hope you enjoyed. I like to keep the jump height at 1. And I hope you guys have a great day. Um, I have had a great one. I got KDR of 6 in a game. That is irrelevant. Have a great one, boys.